Welcome to this week's Tuesday Tip. I'm Ebony Hall. She's Vicki Bell. And this week we're discussing key changes brought by HADMA and how you can effectively communicate these changes to your residents. So if you take a look at your screen right now and uh, you want to share the information that we're going to talk about with your residents, scan that QR code. Make sure there are no surprises when you talk to them about the HADMA changes. This QR code will take you to an email template full of the talking points that we're going to discuss today. So pause for a second. Scan the code and follow along. All right, Vicki, you ready? I am ready. First of all, let me say that I was in a meeting with several trainers on last week, and it was a mixture of people who wanted to inform their residents and people who did not. As we know, and as we've mentioned before, we're not quite ready or HUD's not quite ready because mm -hmm. we don't have forms and things. So half the bunch thought that the residents would go into a panic mode and be asking them questions that they didn't really have the answers to. Yet another half thought that they would do it. One of the, uh, the SAMA, the Mid-Atlantic SAMA, one of their sessions is going to be communicating with the residents regarding HOTMA. So it's up to you guys whether you want to tell them now or if you want to wait, we just want to give you a heads up mm -hmm. about what you should and should not tell them. Okay, so let's go, Ebony. All right, first up, income calculation adjustment. So as you know, one of the significant changes under HOTMA is how we calculate residents' income. So Vicki, can you explain the main changes to these calculations under HOTMA and how can property managers effectively communicate these changes to the residents? Because I'm sure they're going to have questions. Oh, I'm sure they are, too. And the main change is that the assets and the way that we're calculating the income from the assets has changed. Today, we received, well, actually, it was Thursday, we received the new 2025 asset limitations, and it's going to be a little different. However, we have an impact. We have not implemented the 2024 yet, but it's good to know that HUD's on top of it and we will be getting those things. So the main thing you want to watch is your asset uh, amount for your new residents and the way you apply them. Remember that your tenant selection plan has always been for applicants and not for residents, but there are some requirements that HUD is requiring you to put into the tenant selection plan that will affect your existing residents uh, as far as income goes and calculating income and assets. So be aware of that. Okay. And if we go to the next slide, HUD does have a resource sheet from its HOTMA Income and Assets Training Series. If you haven't checked out their training series, go ahead and do that today. You can get that PDF by scanning the QR code that's on your screen right now. So take a look at it. It has a whole list of them, Vicki. Yes. And it's quite a thorough list. Um, make sure that you do obtain a copy and look at it and read it and make yourself familiar with it. You know, the... Um, thing about the checking account, whereas we would count six months average on checking, now we don't need a six months average. We only need a one month average. So make sure you make yourself familiar with it. And hopefully this will come as easy to you as a process that we're using now. But I must give a disclosure here, Ebony. We are not using HOTMA until your software mm -hmm. is 203A compliant. I'm going to make it again before the end of this session because we have people that are beginning to say, well, I can't get my software to do this and I can't get it to do that. And it brings back with our people who are paying out your vouchers and they're getting stuck. So let's make sure that we know when to implement these changes. It's kind of like hurry up and wait. Yes, hurry up and wait. <laughs> All right, let's talk about asset limitation and adjustments. What are the new asset limitations that are introduced in HOTMA, and how can we explain this, these changes to our residents? Well, the new asset limitations, as you know, are $100,000 of real property and assets. And there are some triggers 
as to what will be accepted and what will not be accepted if you own real property, such as real estate, uh, the actual income from the assets. We will be calculating them two ways now. If there's income from the asset, then that income is counted. If the asset has no income, then it's not. If you don't know the income from the asset, then you will have to use the passbook rate. Okay. And that's a little different from before. Before, we did use the passbook rate until an asset became $5,000 or more. But now it's a little different. It's a lot of changes with this, guys. Take your time. Read up. HUD has several training things on their website. And Ebony gave us the website last time, last week. And I'm sure we'll get it again this week. Okay. And also encourage your residents to ask questions. I know that sometimes you're like, well, I don't really know the answer, but it's a good time for you to seek clarification for yourself. You can go back to that slide, Chris. And we do have examples of exclusions from the HOTMA training series as well. So go ahead. This, the, the QR codes right there. We're going to make all of this available on our website as well, but encourage them to talk to you because the one thing we need now going through all this is transparency and communication. That is true, Ebony, so true. And not only that, for the people who thought last uh, week on the call we were on that, oh, I don't want them asking me questions or I'm not ready to answer questions, they will begin to talk amongst one another. So it's best mm -hmm. that they get the information from you because you guys know how they talk. Uh, <laughs> Ms. Johnson said that, you know, you have to do such and such a thing. So even if you just let them know, the minor changes that are coming, not really dive deep into it, but that there will be some training coming for them. There will be some discussions coming for them and that you will let them know in plenty of time what will affect and will not affect them so that they won't be so worried. And then maybe they won't come to you because you've already gone to them. And another thing that they can look forward to, I guess you could say look forward to, are changes to property inspections and standards. So how do we reassure our residents about what's going on with the, the new inspections and standards? Well, as you guys know, we're off React and on Inspire. And the standards are more so with Inspire for the dwelling unit itself, as opposed to being for the exterior and common areas like it was for React. The, there is a program out there that's on the HUD website that will tell you what Inspire is looking for, what they're counting. They, HUD has even put a little self-calculator out there that you could almost predict your own score. So you have to take advantage of the tools that HUD's putting out there. And one thing they can let their residents know is that these enhanced property standards, it's going to make life better for you in the community. So yes. you can reassure them with that as well. So now um, families with a housing choice voucher now have more flexibility in using their housing assistance. So that's another change. And this is particularly to PHAs, right? Yes. Our properties on our side, as far as contract administration goes or contract administrator goes, are all project-based, the subsidies with the units. On the public housing side, they have vouchers that they can give out. And sometimes the vouchers are what they call portable. You may live in Alabama, but you're ported to Wyoming. So um, if you have vouchers, if you are a, a company that deals with vouchers that are portable and unportable, then you really need to make sure that you're aware of how they're working that. Okay. And a lot of times uh, what HUD is saying now is people can take these vouchers and maybe move to a lower poverty area, move for better schools. Perhaps they got a new job, but they can make sure that they can take that housing assistance with them. But again, this is for public housing agencies. Yes. And the public housing agency issues the voucher and the management company or the owner agent of the particular property can or cannot accept it. And for those who are listening that might be with public housing, be careful with that can and cannot accept it. You don't want to cross a fair housing line in refusing to accept a voucher. That's a good reminder. 
All right, now let's turn to how HUD has streamlined the recertification process, particularly people who are on fixed income. So what are the new processes under HOTMA and how do we talk to our residents about this? Well, to be honest with you, streamlining is not new. It's several years old. When I say several <laughs> years old, I mean several years old. We just keep streamlining, streamlining. Yes. <laughs> the thing is that a lot of companies were not taking advantage of it. If you have a family that has fixed income, Social Security, VA benefits, and you know that they're going to get an increase through their COLA or what have you, then you can do their certifications for three years. You first get the third part of verification that you would always get for the first year. Then you can go two years with just the COLA raise doing it yourself without having to do a third party verification. And then the fourth year you recertify again. A lot of the trainers like it because it's simple and it's easy. Uh, the income portion was a lot simpler than the asset portion. There was a streamlining for assets also, but it fluctuated too much that most people just use the fixed income for families. Uh, don't forget that with HOTMA, we will now know the COLA amount when it comes out. It doesn't have to be sent to the residents. It could just be on the news that the COLA will go, let me push it back up to 8.5%, something that people like, that the COLA will be 8.5%. And you can go ahead and requalify and uh, recertify your people by just knowing what the COLA amount's going to be. All right, let's talk rent adjustments. So this basically makes sure that there are no surprises with the changes here. Yes. Um, basically what you want to remember if you are a project-based property is to make sure that you get your increases for your rents in on time, make sure you get your budgets and things in on time, make sure you know what your budgets are and that they're submitted to our people for your rent adjustments. Um, Stability for residents is really important. Mm -hmm. It's important for me. I like to know what I'm going to have to pay and when I'm I'm required to pay it. So, yes, uh, rent adjustments are important. It's not as much of a change in terms of HOTMA as everything else, but there will be a slight change and a different little method in order to let them know. Now, eligibility, uh, what are the new criteria under HOTMA? And how does uh, automatic requalification, how does that work? Well, automatic requalifications for some residents, you have your seniors, and because you've streamlined them, you'll automatically know that they will requalify without going through a lot of changes and get them a lot of extra documentation. It actually streamlines and helps you simplify the process for uh, qualifications, but I want our viewers to keep in mind that there are different regs for a move-in, which would be an applicant that's moving in, or for an existing resident that came off the program and goes back on the program through an initial. Okay. So make sure that you know the differences between those. A person who comes off and goes back on with an initial is treated just like a new applicant. Okay. So this is all a big change, Ms. Vicki. Um, and we talked about property managers trying to keep themselves informed so that they can answer those questions. So what's the best way, especially for our owners and agents, to help their staff that's on property talking to residents every day about these changes? I would think communication is the key. Um, the, what I call upper management, needs to communicate with their managers that are on site and the on site managers that get these questions that sometimes they say, oh, that's just Miss Johnson. She has the craziest questions. But relay Ms. Johnson's question back to your regional. Be prepared to have answers because sometimes the mix-up comes in the communication mm -hmm. or the lack of communication. 
Definitely. You don't want your residents to think that they don't have any right to ask about their living and their living environment because they do. So you want to provide resources and support for them up front. There are um, some questions and answers that are on the Hub website for managers, and there's some talking points on that same website that HUD suggests that you use to talk to your residents. So use some of these things or post them. If you don't want to start a conversation because you know Ms. Johnson's just going <laughs> to talk and talk and talk, so you can point her to your bulletin board or give her a copy of the changes. But now let me tell you, Ms. Johnson is going to tell Mr. Smith, Mr. White, Ms. Jones, and everybody else. So the best thing to do, I would think, is to go back to those old-fashioned newsletters. Then mm -hmm. everybody gets the same thing from you at the same time. And, of course, they're going to have questions. You know, um, we're the... I guess the stage of the game, and I say that meaning age, where you're going to have questions. The younger people think they already know the answer, so they're not going to have <laughs> as many questions. But the older people like me will want to know how it works, how it happens. So just keep communications open and be um, empathetic with mm -hmm. your residents because this involves their living. It involves their their livelihood, where they're mm -hmm. going to live. And as they watch the news and they see things changing so much, it just frightens you sometimes that you want to know ahead of time. For those of you who don't want to give any information ahead of time, that's simply left up to you. However, HUD has given us resources that if you don't want to talk to them, you can point them in the right direction to the resources and just tell them that the resources are available. I want you to read about the changes and we will discuss them when I call a meeting or the next time we meet as a community. Uh -huh. Okay. And just so you know, we do have some of those talking points up on our website. It's in a format, uh, Vicki, where they can cut and paste and put it in an email to the residents or in a newsletter, like you said, or just print it out and hand it out so they can, if they have questions, they can just look for the topic and uh, possibly get an answer for themselves. But of course, we always want you to have open communication with your residents. Um, just makes things easier on property. That's true. And one of the main things that you can tell them is that HUD's still working it out. Mm -hmm. There are so many things that have not been finalized yet. And let them know that there's some information out there, but there's still so many things that have not been finalized that once they're finalized, I'll talk to you about them. Definitely. It reminds me of my days as a, a TV reporter. You ask a police officer about it, it's under investigation. <laughs> There's nothing else you can do with that. It's under investigation. So when I know, you'll know. Yes. <laughs> All right, Vicki, how can people get in touch with you? Here at Navigate, it's vbell at navigatehousing.com. If you'd like to reach Pam, our other trainer, if I'm not available, hers is pkkalaskas at navigatehousing.com. That's a tongue twister for me. But, Ebony, I also do want to um, mention the fact that because HUD has not come out with a lot of the material that we need, we're already getting calls about what am I going to do about my September ARs? Mm. My advice to you is that you're going to do the same thing that you're telling your residents to do. We're going to wait to see what HUD says. Um, we have calls that are coming in. Is the program going to be up and running by 1-1 of 2025? Our answer is we haven't the faintest idea. It's under investigation. It's under investigation. I like that. <laughs> we'll all just have to wait and see. All right. Thank you, Vicki. And thank you for watching today. You can go to our website. You have something else? No, I was going to say, I thank you guys. Oh, yes. Navigatehousing.com for more information. We'll see you next week. See you then.